I've got two images to show you. Tell me which one you think is more professional. Okay. I would say B is like the professional one. B. B well. Yeah, you both say B. I'd prefer A. You yeah, prefer A. a. <laughs> we've got two A's, have we got two B's? Yeah. I personally like the second one. I like this one. You like that one? I think that's the professional. I think the first one I think the first the one, this one just looks like it's been taken on like iPhone portrait. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that buying expensive gear doesn't make you a better videographer but can it make it look like you are? So to find out, I asked people with an untrained eye to tell us which image they think looks more professional. The one using this expensive telephoto lens or the more affordable kit lens that comes with the camera. But before we see the results, I want to show you how this 70 to 200 telephoto lens forces you to work in a different way and how that alone can help you learn new skills. Compared to the wider kit lens, the telephoto lens allows you to capture detail that you can't get close enough to. So this is perfect for wildlife, travel, street photography, or if you just like to expose fruit stall staff from a distance who are smoking on the job. I hope this poor woman's ready for an odd tasting satsuma. <laughs> Where do you think this was filmed? Italy? La France? It was actually in Nottingham City Centre Square. A wider lens shows more of the scene and gives the viewer context. So you may feel a little bit restricted when you first use a tighter lens, but because you're picking out a subject without showing much of its environment, it actually leaves the story open to the viewer's interpretation and imagination, all the Asians. And because you can't fit as much in the frame, you don't have to work as hard to make all the elements fit together while you're trying to compose your shot. Trying to compose this artwork is quite tricky, but focusing in on one of the elements is a lot simpler. And just showing this artwork alone makes you wonder what type of building it is, rather than just seeing it as a shop. There's intrigue, and we're actually creating more of a story by showing less. Most telephoto lenses are really difficult to keep steady without using a tripod, so you get a lot of wobble. But this has stabilization built into the lens, so you can actually get some really smooth follow shots without using a gimbal. And it makes it so much easier to take handheld photos as well. Normally, if you want to switch between autofocus and manual focus, the switch is at the back of the lens. So you have to move your hand every time you want to switch. Whereas with this lens, that function is actually built in to the focus ring, which makes it a lot quicker to manual focus because you don't have to move your hand anywhere. So those are my reasons why I think every videographer should own one of these lenses. But what does everybody else think? I think that's a professional. That, what do you yeah. think? Have we got a 50-50 split? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to fall out after this, are you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. The professional, I think, was A. Can you tell me why? There's more focus on person. I was going to go B. I you were going to go B? Yeah. You were going to go B as well? I would say B is like the professional one. You say B? So yeah. Why? yeah, why? I feel like there's more focus there. Yeah, more but focus obviously on... the background's not that focused. I think the first one would I be the, the first professional. One. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Hard to say. Are you changing your answer? No, I'm sticking with my first one. You're sticking with your why. first one. I don't know so why. you're going with A, you're yeah, going with A, a as well? well. B. B. B well. Yeah, you both say B. I think it's the first one. Maybe. First one is the pro. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Same. I, I think I personally like the second one. I think this lens also got a little bit different. It's more likely to be a pro. I think B. I think yeah. I'm going that one. Yeah. So, you, so we've got two for A. We've got two Bs. Yeah. Yeah, it felt like B was like a lot more work had gone into it with the background blurring it out. I like this one. I don't know. There's this like more happening. I think I like this one better. You like that one. Thirty-three point three percent more people said that the telephoto lens looked more professional. So technically, if you've got one of these lenses, you're going to look more pro. But what I found most interesting was this is an f4 lens. If you really need that extra stop of light, then it might be worth paying the extra for the 2.8 version. But if it's just the blurry background that you want, then listen to what these people have to say before jumping into it. Because I don't like the fact that the background was blurry in the second one. Right, you don't like yeah, the blurry background. Like the it feels like a proper background rather than being just a background. I like the background of the A. You like the I, I think the background is better than the next one. Yeah. But you want to see more in the background, yeah, yeah. Can you say that again? Because that's a really good point. Uh, exactly how you said it. <laughs> you can't say anything in the background, it's really blurry. It's much better to be able to see something in the background. Right, so you think too much blur yeah. is, is not nice. It's distracting, yeah. yeah. This looks like very short on the iPhone kind of vibe. Okay. Uh, Both pictures are really good. Both are good. The pictures yeah. are good. good. I think it's just about the scenery because the scene was different. That's yeah. why I prefer that. Yeah. yeah. And this one just like it's been taken on like iPhone portrait. People just don't seem to be into that blurry background anymore. 
And by the sounds of it, iPhone portrait mode could have ruined depth of field for everybody. Because of the compression of the lens, it separates the subject from the background even more. So you can still get that blurry background without having an f2.8 lens, for example. Look how smooth that background is. And obviously it gets smoother and blurrier the higher you go. So it's 70 mil, still got nice blur, but 200 mil, look at that. There's a big difference there. Say hello, Danny boy. The, the people have spoken. Now obviously it's not as simple as this. These examples are completely out of context. I only showed them two very short clips side by side and there's much more to it than that because every single lens has its own purpose and there's so much you can do with one lens but not another. So it comes down to the needs and your style. So having a fancy lens might make your shots look a little nicer but if you choose the wrong focal length for your shot it simply won't work and your videos won't have the impact that you need. That's why you want to watch this video next because I show you exactly how to avoid this and make sure that you connect with your audience on a deeper level.